So today we are out hunting for bark rounds. We're saying hunting, we're technically gathering, but um, in northern Wisconsin, some county in northern Wisconsin, and I picked up a couple of these already uh, this afternoon. And what I mean is uh, birch bark from trees that have been um, uh, dead, laying down in the woods and rotting for. I'm not sure, uh, a certain period of time. They have to be rotting for a little bit for you to get this off of the wood, but it can't be rotting too long, otherwise it's, it, the integrity of it won't stay together when you want to use it for a craft project or something like that. But they come in various uh, diameters, and it does take a little finagling and some work to harvest these, but these are fantastic for building uh, craft projects. I'm going to show you how we do it. Right here is a a log that I identified before that is down, and I think it's at the right, um, gosh, I hate to use the word ripeness, but kind of like feeling avocados at a, a grocery store. It's got to be giving a little bit, but not too much, and it certainly can't be firm or you'll never get the bark off of the wood. So I don't expect to get this all in one, so I'm going to gingerly try in one end here. Of course, it's being a little bugger, but we almost have it here. All right, well, that went easy. You can see how the wood just slid right out, and you can see right down here, and then you can cut these in sections for a woodland house. I love these. They make a nice round wooden frame for a house. Heck, even uh, you could use this in a fairy garden as a fairy house. If I was a fairy, I might want to live in here myself. And uh, cut these six to eight inches high, and then you can assemble a roof, which we'll do that in another segment. But these are fantastic. And we just happen to be in an area where there used to be a lot of birch growing. They fell down, and now they're, they're breaking up. And you can see that a little messy but again we can get this stuff out and whatever breaks apart we can use for birch bark but some of the things I, I like about the naturalness about this um, we can dry this up and this coloration can come back a little bit but I love all these little holes that have been made either by insects or woodpeckers we can use these and uh, put um, sticks around as framework for windows. It's very, very nice. Let's, uh, let's continue down the road and see what else. Sometimes the birch isn't right near the end of the road. Uh, we're on the side of the road and we have to go back in it. We're going back in this swampy area. You can see there's a lot of dead stuff along the way. And then, uh, Here's a piece right here. I think this is going to be good. Oh yeah, this one's going to be fantastic. That's one piece. And we're going to try and get it started here. Whoop. Broken half, but that's all right. We're going to cut that down anyway. Just carefully take that off. Voila. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece. You can make two, three, four, probably eight different structures, house structures, what have you, out of just this. So remember I told you that the, the bark rounds, the, uh, the logs have to be just the right consistency. It has to be the wood starting to rot, but not too rotten so that you still have a good bark round with integrity. So here are a couple of um, 
bark rounds that I just shimmied off um, this log right here they actually weren't quite ready and um, I want to show you how we do that it's still raining but this is awesome um, here is a um, this is a tool it is used for cutting thick insulation insulation bats that go inside of a crawl space or a roof or that thing and it works really good for um, cutting insulation but it also works really good for getting bark off a log that's not quite ready to let go of its skin so here we go this is a whoops sorry about that folks here is a nice piece this is probably six seven inches in diameter but it will not budge and uh, so what we're going to do is I am going to take this piece and I'm going to shimmy it in there kind of like pardon the expression skinning a fish sorry if that offends anybody but this this works really good you just kind of gently peel it around now I'm going to switch this over and come in the other way one of these days I'm gonna have a professional videographer do this so I don't have to hold the darn camera myself well there's a part that's pretty solid so well we got through it cool so we're getting through this doggone it punched a hole oh well that hole that's where a window will go not to worry you need holes anyway so now let's see if we're loose enough yet um, come on baby not quite yet I gotta just shimmy a little bit more as luck would have it it's it's been a bugger and the rain is going so what I'm gonna do is I am gonna make a slice in the middle here and I'm gonna slowly cut around and then we should be able to get each piece individual piece off well I've cut it in half this one continued to be a challenge and just didn't work out this one I'm gonna try and take some of the wood out roughly with my hand um, And then, hopefully, well, this is good that I show this because it's not all fun and games and it's not always easy. But this little bark round is not going to get the best of me. <clears throat> Let's see. There we go, folks. It's coming apart. There. Lovely. All clean. Well, it's not clean, but we're going to clean it up. And again, don't worry about the holes and the cracks because that gives you places to put natural doors and windows. Well, folks, uh, it is raining cats and dogs today, but um, had a wonderful, successful hunt this morning. All kinds of bark rounds. Some of them very, very pretty white. But then there's these other weathered ones. And I gotta tell you, I I can appreciate the bright white ones, but I think that the weathered look is so much neater. Look at this old this is a, a birch tree that had been fallen over. And we've got some shelf mushrooms growing on it right here. And it's just weathered look. And I can't, I mean, so beautiful. The uh, cool craft projects that we could do with that one is amazing. So I'm trying to shelter the phone here because it's raining. And I um, apologize for the quality of the video and maybe the sound, but really good day. We're going to go get some more.
Good morning. It is a beautiful, crisp October morning in northern Wisconsin woods. And uh, it's a Sunday. Beautiful. Probably the last warmish day of the year. It's supposed to get into the, uh, the low 60s today. So I'm having some coffee out here. Delilah's on the on the porch. She doesn't know what today is going to bring, but today we are today is bark round washing processing uh, day. And so we're gonna walk over here. I have a few bark rounds right here. And let me pause the camera. And I have a lot more bark rounds here. Lots, that's like 15, 20 feet long of bark rounds. And then, and then we have uh, more bark rounds back here along the house. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to take a, um, a chop saw and I will carefully put these bark rounds in there and um, cut them down to size. I have to measure somewhere between four and six inches in height. Round extravaganza is going very, very well. Certainly, um, it's not going to be that fun cleaning those all up, but it's got to be better than cleaning fish. So, at least we've got that. And the next day. One hundred and sixty bark rounds, and then another thirty-five kind of smaller diameter. So there's a hundred and ninety-five bark rounds here, each one hand scrubbed inside and out. 